Well, it's uh, Nick Clegg's big speech tomorrow at the Liberal Democrat Conference. We political hacks always say that it's the most important speech of his life. It's a bit of a cliche, but it may just be true. Because, you see, I feel with Nick Clegg that he's liked by the Liberal Democrats, he's respected by the Liberal Democrats, and after all, they chose him in the first place. But he's not yet loved by the Liberal Democrats. They like a leader who makes them feel more manly, a bit more macho. They like David Steele. They really like Paddy Ashdown, uh, the only leader they've ever had who could kill a man with his bare hands or with a length of piano wire. And so Nick Clegg looks a little bit sort of academic, uh, rather worthy, tries a little bit too hard, perhaps. Uh, so they, they don't really sit down when Clegg's about to speech with that sort of tingly feeling that they're going to be really thrilled, excited, electrified, and send them back to their constituencies to prepare for the big day of the election coming up next year. So it's going to be tricky for him. He's also developed one or two nervous speech habits, a bit like Robert Peston, the BBC's business correspondent, who um, tends, like this, to have long pauses and then suddenly gabbles away. There is no question mark over the policy of the Liberal Democrats to scrap tuition fees. So that's a little bit alarming as well. But the other trick he has to pull off is this. He's not really talking to the party audience. He's talking to the people who might be watching him on the news later on uh, tomorrow evening, uh, the people who are they think the absolutely crucial voters in the next election, people who are absolutely fed up with Labour, wonder why they voted Labour three times, uh, why they've seen so little return for what happened, why we're in this mess, they feel that Labour has absolutely had it. And the big fight of the next election is Lib Dems versus Tories. Now, none of them who are remotely sane think that they're going to beat the Tories, but they're desperately trying to persuade people that the Tories aren't inevitable, that you don't just have to vote Tory because you don't like Labour anymore, that there is a real alternative, and it's the Liberal Democrats. So he's really speaking over the heads of the party, which is going to be quite a tricky job because the party arrives here, they want to put forward their own things, you know, end of Trident, all that kind of thing, keep tuition fees in spite of the, uh, the dangers the economy faces, all that. Um, so he's got to be placating them, infusing them, making them want to dash back to their constituencies and start addressing envelopes and knocking on doors, at the same time appealing over their heads uh, to the people at home who might be tempted into voting Liberal Democrat if they think there's a real chance that they could have a great influence after the next election. Uh, he ends his speech by announcing, let today be the first day of the future of British politics. That's a pretty grandiose thing to say, just because you, party leader for two years, have actually made a speech. But I think that's what he's trying to say, is that everything's changed, all the bets are off, Labour's finished, Tories are no good, uh, we're going to be the future, and this is the first day of us becoming the future. Well, it's pretty optimistic. Um, and I suspect what will happen is that the uh, crowd, the audience, will all stand up, they'll give him a standing ovation, and they'll look at their watches and wondering when the next train back home comes.